Hey Jeff, uh, it's great to see you. We um we had a, a, a funny sort of uh, scenario whereby uh, I was going to make the phone call. And we talked about the name of this chat. Um, you came up with a lovely Latin name. Uh, the name that I suggested was the Samurai Sessions because at the time we both had top knots because of the lockdown hair. Yet now we're both looking like chiseled young men again, and there the man, go. the manscaping and grooming has come in. Um, so it's good. How are you feeling today, mate? You okay? Yeah, man, I'm I'm great. Um, to do a quick catch up, we tried to do this live yesterday and ran into a technical uh, problem with a camera related to Mac over a PC. Um, John McCracken is uh, my producer. He's my partner in the music that I produce and was trying to fix it. And it was a technical thing. And often, as usually happens, it was one little situation that we didn't happen on to fix. So the, this, the, the whole live uh, presentation, unfortunately, didn't happen. So Phil happened on this idea, which is let's, let's do one and record it and, and replace it. And then the next one we'll do will be live with all the glitches uh, worked out. It's OK. It's all good. It's the thing. You've got to think on your feet. You know, it's a lot, a lot like being a, a working musician. It's the fright or flight scenario. We kept a level head and then we just regrouped and come out punching again today. It's not a problem. So That's it's, exactly uh, it's right. fine. Jeff, um, so we've we, we kind of we've got a cool little affiliation starting to happen now between the Jeff Berlin Music Group and uh, with bass in mind. And what we've been doing is we've we we told all of our followers uh, about this little chat um, and they sent in their questions to me uh, to say, hey, can you sit down with Jeff? Because I mean, I suppose what I'm hoping for is obviously we've been mates now for quite a long time. Uh, actually, you were at my 40th birthday last year, buying me pancakes in Nashville. And we 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 met way back, believe this or not, in 2006. So we're, it's going on like a, a 15 year relationship almost now, which uh, which is great. You know, sometimes we've been acquaintances. We've always been friends on the road. It's all good. But the idea being that if guys are sending me questions, then we can talk relaxed about it, you know, without having our our chins up like we're being interviewed for some fancy platform or, you know, or magazine where we've got to be correct and well-spoken and stuff. We can just shoot the breeze, London to Nashville, have a chat and then talk about a few things. So oh, yeah. the questions that come in, um, we've collated them. Here they all are. Um, actually, this is a good one. And this is a nice one because they quoted you. And that's what I liked. Um, they said, hey, Jeff, you wrote. I wrote. <laughs> what did what did what did I wrote? <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, one <laughs> notice a notably misguided approach in base education is that it tries to teach everything. The question was was why is this misguided? Um, okay, give me a second. I'm going to gather thoughts related to my comment. Okay. Uh, when you consider that the predominant amount of bass playing is based on the playing of styles, uh, technique, slap, plucking, etc., uh, and the variety of, of approaches, practically 100% of the people that play these things are self-taught in them. Um, the whole style industry, if I can use that word, the whole approach to playing bass styles is practically entirely t learned by being in it. Funk bass players, blues bass players, rock bass players, gospel bass players, metal bass players, slap bass players, two-handed bass players are practically entirely self-taught in those styles. And ironically, so are the teachers of the styles that people are paying to be taught. The teachers are self-taught in them. There are practically no teachers that have been taught slap in an academic setting, let's say, who became skilled enough to uh, employ it in their playing uh, repertoire or teach it. Now, the reason that, uh, quote, quote, re read the quote again. What did I say that? He said that it's uh, uh, base education, uh, the misguided approach is that it tries to teach everything. Everything. The, the thing with education is, in, in music education, that music education and other instruments doesn't try to teach everything. It tries to teach instrument and musical content practically, period. 
there almost isn't any other extended approach to being taught. In the base world, everything has been laid out to where you even go which finger, left, right finger, practicing alternating fingers, even separating the right hand technique from left hand technique, when in fact, there practically is no separation of right hand and left hand. You need the right hand in order to articulate the left, left hand, and you need the left hand to fret what the right hand is, is articulating. It's a unified thing. So by teaching everything, it has prevented bass players from being in a situation. But up, we got a phone call from John. That's okay. <laughs> so okay. it has prevented bass players from being precisely in a situation where they have to be, which is to be inexperienced, sound bad, be bumpy, be unsure, and grow from there. Because this is the process that the whole approach to bass playing has developed from it mm. is developed from it every slapper it starts out as being poor in the experience slaps and learns and becomes good at it if they pursue it that's the problem with bass education they've even the road and have taken away from bass players the opportunity i'll say a, a word here to sound like shit mm. which is ironically where we all have to start sounding mm. like in order to grow, but it's not a very psychologically satisfying thing. So base education, I feel, has done a very bad decision in smoothing out every conceivable, predictable problem that can come upon a base player by educating them in it and denying them the experience to learn it as a self-taught musician where every single name musician in every single style that's practically 100% of everybody that has ever played the bass has come from. So bass education with good intentions has literally prevented bass players, students, from improving. And the reason I know this or believe this is because with all of the varieties of opportunities of lessons, they're teaching everything online and in schools they're teaching everything, and yet as a community, most or many or a great proportion of bass players still can't play well. So, it's okay. Yeah, it's actually interesting you said there about about uh, about education being, shall we say, formalized online. You know, there's this mass amount of content whereby content is what's gathering momentum as opposed to um, communication and, and actual academia. So the passing of information from teacher to student is more about uploading information so student can, can watch it. Um, what's the benefit for students? I mean, these days, you know, is, is I, I'm, I'm 41 now. I'm still hanging in there just about. But, um, you know, I came from a split generation whereby when I, when I started playing, the only way to play was a pencil and a piece of manuscript paper. And I went to see a teacher one to one. These days I can log on and as you just sit there, every single component of playing the experience has, has been logged online. So as, as a student, and this, this actually relates really nicely to one of our questions, um, as a student, should they be looking for private lessons or should they, you know, through whether it be Skype or Zoom, one-to-one -one basis like this, which has its benefits, obviously, it's a platform they've chosen, not us, um, or should they be you know, putting their time into streaming online platforms? What's the benefits for not the consumer, but the actual student receiving information and guidance? Online? Well, yeah, between the two, yeah, whether it be one-to-one -one or... Well, one-to-one could fall into the same sort of difficulty that the online lessons can fall into if the one-on-one -on -one teacher also is unaware of the musical content to teach. So if, if there's online, let's say, how to play with a drummer uh, principles, which uh, I, I don't mean to scoff at this, but how to lock with a drummer, the, 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 the lessons are so... Are, intended to solve a problem that just can be fixed by being in it. Yeah. Uh, so the online teachers one-on-one, -on -one, if the teacher isn't teaching somebody content to practice, 
they're going to be teaching the same things that one can see online. So while I'm not very popular am amongst base educators for my public comments, the solution is to not go to these people, but to find a teacher that teaches musical content to practice, to practice notes. So I made a mistake, but... Um, I like when I make mistakes, because when I practice, I make mistakes. In my videos, I leave them in. A teacher of music gives everybody exactly what they need. You put your hands on the neck, you play the notes. That develops right hand, left hand. It develops a, a knowledge of the content of music, the language. People have referred to music as a language. But interestingly, bass players that believe music is a language, for some reason, have decided not to learn it as one. That's always been an ironic sort of uh, what's the word? Dichot uh, uh, dichotomy? Dichotomy? Is that the word? Yeah, that's correct. To, to, uh, it's, it's four syllables, so it threw me. So dichotomy. <laughs> I like words like, you know, no, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's a New Yorker again. <laughs> you know? So, so that's the issue. It's like music, written music, gives us a chance to play the, the neck. I mean, the very first reason a bass was built is to play notes. It's so obvious, you can see it on the instrument, that the very first reason, the very first purpose, before groove, before gigs, before locking, before slap, before funk, before art, the very, very, very first reason that this instrument and other instruments like it exist is to learn how to navigate this thing. And that requires notes. And it's the first principle that ought to influence and inspire people. Inspiration is a word I don't like too much. We could discuss it later. But uh, I have reasons for my thoughts. I don't just sure. say things contrary just to say them. But that would solve a great, great portion of the playing of the bass and also getting into self-taught things without having to finance being taught things that literally people's teachers have learned on their own for free. So learn from their experience as well. There was a word there that I, as soon as you said it, it was like an alarm bell going off, and that oh. was finance. Um, one of the things, uh, I have a, an FHEA, which is the Fellowship of the Higher Education Academy. It's a posh, posh ad academic thing over here in, in Europe. And one of the frustrations that I've started seeing now is music education becoming a business, and the business coming before the music education. That was the reason okay. why I stopped teaching uh, at, at, at higher uh, higher levels of a academia um, in those institutions because I didn't feel I, I felt I had a responsibility as a teacher to mentor and guide my students correctly, and I don't think that was happening at these sort of institutes that are teaching um, slap groove and all these things that are non-academic skills which i felt if you mastered the academia you'd be able to do that in your own time away from it uh you know i think this is a something straight away where people need to differentiate is that academia studies don't completely replace they can go hand in hand it's just about sitting down each day doing 15 minutes of sight reading and seeing the benefits that it has on the rest of your play and you don't have to do one or the other you can you know encapsulate all of it Correct, correct. And yeah, I agree with you. And um, just in this particular area, to, to sum up this, this concept of why base education is, is not doing well by teaching you everything, I, the, the solution is to find a teacher or to find a program of reading, uh, to find devices that are based in music and be okay with learning them. If people did this, one, they'd save themselves a lot of money. Two, yeah. they they would cut through the, the bulk of fluff of teaching. People are more impressed by, uh, uh, let's say, a, a presentation that is pleasing to the senses rather than the content that is being offered. So as a solution, if I had the chance, I'd say forget it all. Mm -hmm. I would honestly forget it all and go and buy, I mean, I understand CDs are kind of on the way out or on the way out, but go get a CD, listen to a, to a, uh, a Marcus Miller slap or a Victor Wooten slap or, 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 or Larry Graham slap, 
as they did yeah. and the people that they listened to and develop that of, of Stu Ham slap uh, records. The, the music is right there. It's ear training. And as well, open a thing and sit there and be OK with sounding like SH, you know what? And because we all sound <laughs> incapable as we read, it's built in. You got to start at the bottom floor and work up gently. And that will change everybody by September. Now, a question, another question that I'm going to kind of envelop into the conversation. Please. Because it, it comes in very nicely here. Whereby I guide my students with very much academic rules. We spend a lot of time sight reading. We're now embracing your materials on the Jeff Berlin Music Group. Oh, thank you. They're working fabulous. But when the guys come to me and they say, hey, Phil, I want to learn this slap groove or and we talked about the aforementioned marcus miller victor Wooten, and guys that are seminal and driven in this in this range right i turn around and say to him i'm not going to teach it to you but you are you can transcribe it and we will work through it together but i put the weight on them for transcription how do you feel about transcription it's important well i would my bent is not to transcribe bass parts Okay. Not, not to transcribe, certainly not to transcribe slap bass parts, because the presentation isn't based in a, in a real harmonic area. And even if it was, slap education in harmony isn't quite meaningful to me. Um, so I wouldn't tell a guy to learn it as a written concept. Rather, I would take two or four bars of a simple jazz solo which is based in melody and harmony and develops the ear. Maybe slow it down. There's things to slow down. So is jazz content, but ba 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 da da do ba bo ba is an academic developing principle and also gets people ba bo ba bo ba bo ba bo ba is a development of melody and harmony. So I personally, when people say I transcribe the slap or transcribe the Billy Sheehan line mm. or transcribe, I, I recommend that they don't. That's interesting. I, That's interesting. I recommend that they don't, but use the ear and develop it by ear. Learn yeah. it by ear. May I add one little thought Go for it. That, that relates to this? Eddie Van Halen developed a two-handed thing that revolutionized the world. Do you know how he basically happened upon that? He heard Alan Holdsworth play one-handed long legato lines. <laughs> yeah. And without understanding how he did what he did in the early development of Eddie's life, he used two hands to develop what he heard. This is a perfect example <laughs> of innovation by ear. When you hear a slap guy play something that sometimes is, is inconceivable, by investigating it by ear and looking into it physically, the conclusion you come on, one comes on, could be vastly different than what the original person that played it happened on by their, by their reckoning. Yeah. So if I hear a guy go brr and I can't quite do it, but I go brr brr or brr <laughs> you know, a brr no, nice. <laughs> it's the innovation that I would come up with that might be so striking that it could be Jeff Berlin's nose technique. The problem is, is that some top school is going to teach the nose tex technique in six months. Yeah, yeah. So instead of having the next bunch of guys hear the nose technique and not know that I used my nose, that they could develop the forearm technique. It yeah. is the listening the investigation, the imitation, and by not knowing how to solve something, inventing a way to solve it. That's hey. what original style is. And bass players are denying themselves this. I wish they wouldn't. And, and what's lovely there is to hear that from you. And then in, in, in another chat that I had here with one of the, the finest British seminal session bass players, Mo Foster. Oh, I know Mo Foster. Well, Mo said exactly the same. Mo talked about a session, uh, I, sh I Could Be So Good For You with Dennis Waterman. And he said he was trying to imitate uh, like a, a, a Lewis Johnson slap line, you know, because he had heard the brother Johnson. And he had no idea how to do it. He had his hand the wrong way. He was playing the wrong way. Yet he got the sound. 
but again it was before that that mass as we said documentation of technique and being able to recently you know, access it it's not always the best way sometimes investigation and interpretation leads to new seminal acts so it's a it's a good way of doing things yeah it's well nice. it's yeah. it's also um people have to be willing and this is such an important message to review people have to be willing to sound really really terrible I have to be okay not knowing the triple thumb, which, by the way, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know it. So I have to be okay with And I'm not faking. I'm really trying to play it. You are honest. <laughs> now... I'm not kidding. That's my best attempt. Okay. And I'm okay with showing my lowest capability to people because we all have the lowest capability. That was my absolute lowest, most error filled attempt to do something that I know lots of viewers can do brilliantly better than me. But that's where I would start. The trick with me is I'm okay sounding like poop. I'm okay with it. I know that that is a stepping stone. And that's how Hendrix became Hendrix and how Jocko became Jocko and how Jamerson became Jamerson and how Victor <laughs> Wooten became Victor Wooten and how Stu Han became Stu Han. Because there, wasn't, there weren't other options, they had to sound as they sounded. Maybe they didn't even regard it as sounding like, like, like the S word, you know. <laughs> that they were just, oh, this is what I'm doing. I've got to grow in this. And if bass players from hearing this particular chat will understand that I don't mean to criticize bass education to cause harm. I mean to criticize bass education to cause change. If change is forthcoming, it has to occur either at the source of the educational, the, the educational source, which I don't see coming. I don't see educators changing their ways. So perhaps the consumer the people that lay down money might consider refinancing their investment into things that'll get them what they need. And then to enter into a, as you said, you can do a little reading and you can do a little, that's the a little self investigation. I discovered there's only three ways to learn how to play the bass. I've only one is being self taught. Huh? Come on in. First one. Self taught, which means you're in charge of what you decide to play. Even if yeah. you bought a book or bought a system, you're in charge of purchasing it. At the same time, the self-taught bass player decides what and where they're going to do. When you go to school, they tell you what you should practice. Or if they're smart, they'll tell you. The <laughs> second way is by being trained in musical content. And okay. the whole history of music rests on one of two of these things. Louis Armstrong was self-taught and also, I think, learned a little music. Jaco Pastorius was self-taught and then also learn musical content. Jack Bruce, self-taught, but then went to the Royal Academy in Scotland. There are only two ways. What's the third way? Doing both. So essentially, <laughs> I don't see a fourth option. And since the perception of learning is so narrow, it's easy to decide how to improve, but people have to want to improve. Can I be honest? I'm not so sure many do. I don't think they do either. I don't think they do. I think it's more of an entertainment and more of a, well, maybe I'll get a gig, which I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry for the blunt way I'm talking. I'm trying to head off the de uh, uh, deviated thought and, and considerations, but people can write questions about this for the next one that That's we'll do live. Right. But I'm trying to stop people from taking detours and stay on the road to learn because learning is this narrow. Art is this. Mm. That's okay. the trick. Learning ought to be narrow and art ought to be unlimited. I've got two questions that are both related to what we just spoke about. Please. Um, but I want to talk about this first one now because we, you, um, you just mentioned there about people that don't want to learn. Some people just want to make a racket and have some fun. And That's for fair. The guys, for the guys that are, are sitting here watching this now and saying, well, do you know what, actually, Jeff, I, I don't want to learn to read. Actually, Jeff, do you know what? I just want to get a plectrum and play punk music. And I just want to jump around on stage and make a right old racket and have some beers, my friend, at the weekend. What advice would you give those guys? I congratulate them for knowing where they want to be in music. 
<laughs> and without any criticism or comment or anything else, say, go for it. You know where you stand. And if you know where you stand, there's room in the world for people that really just want to have fun, you know, playing the bass. The one extra caveat is a lot of these people go to YouTube referring to picking up tips. Yeah. Or may go to a, 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 an online uh, bass lessons uh, there's many now, I've noticed, to get a little, well, maybe I could learn something here. Maybe I could learn something here. By doing this, the indication, excuse me, by doing this, the indication is that they want to learn. So ironically, by going to YouTube and elsewhere, they have ironically entered into the area that you and I focus on, the learning of bass. It's, it's a self-taught decision to do it. But if you want to pick up tips... Picking up tips is like window shopping. It's unreliable. You may, you may not. <laughs> and in that thing, I mean, that's the, the, the opportunity as a self-taught guy, the guy that wants to play with a plectrum and play punk. So if one is going into the slight area of picking up stuff, my encouragement is to be pushed a little bit into a higher area of picking up stuff <laughs> if they choose to do so. But if one just wants to bang around and just have fun, I'm absolutely in their corner, and these guys deserve support, and I give it to them. Yeah, good. Nice call, man. Good call. Um, the uh, one question that came in, which is related to something we just spoke about a little yeah. while back, and this was this was leaning on how other instruments are taught, um, which was good. Now, when I studied with you, um, and for the guys, actually, one of the questions was, can we give a quick synopsis of our relationship? So I'll, I'll say that now, and then I'll oh, ask a question. sure, sure. I, for anybody that doesn't know about my footprint, uh, I, I did the whole thing. I did um, diploma, degree, and master's degree in Europe, uh, all in performance. And I thought I was the bee's knees, and I really wasn't. Um, <laughs> it was, I was a young punk who was pretty ignorant and... and now you and, um, no, thanks. <laughs> but I, I, I stumbled across um, a tiny piece of manuscript online, and it was connected with a British guy called Lawrence Cottle. Oh, Lawrence, surely. Um, yeah, lots. And and Laurie, the piece of work came from Charlie Banacus. Yes. Now, that was the link that brought me to you. And then, because uh, I, I couldn't find anybody that was taught, that was still teaching that stuff. Everywhere I went now was contemporary platforms. And I'd been through that system and I wasn't to, to, you know, getting what I needed out of it. Yeah, yeah. So I came to you and we started a very formal study of chord tones. Um, we've also a, a Matt, one of our good friends, Boo Boo, uh, Boo Boo Licks, uh, Matt Bacullick, which is uh, a dear friend of mine now. But, um, Whilst I was with you, one of the texts that I worked from very closely was chord tone studies for trombone. Correct. And one of the things that that book opened up for me was, and it was actually a, a good friend of ours made a nice comment recently, Stuart Clayton. He said the good thing about reading from trombone is you get an awful lot of flat keys, which is you know unique as an academic study. You don't get as much of that in the bus, the, the bass world. One of the questions that was asked was, how much did you grow as a musician from a non-bassist teacher? Now, I can inv like, introduce that because originally you was trained on violin. Yes. Um, everything I do and everything I know was taught to me by non-bass -bass educators, by non-bass educators. I'll emphasize this again. Everything I know in music came from a non-bass teacher. And the reason is, is because bass teachers aren't in general as harmonically alert or aware as pianists, sax players, and other instruments that are melodic in nature are. By the nature of a saxophone, they must learn melody based in harmony. Charlie Benakis was an innovator in uh, lessons in harmony and in varieties of ways to learn it that was greatly influential on me. Bass players generally attend to, uh, generally who study in schools or study with teachers, 
inevitably study through Samandal or Nanny or books of this type, which are essentially Arco books, Boeing books. So mm -hmm. while the harmony is there, that might be okay for, for beginning readers and to develop that. There, the limit, the scope of limited awareness of music by bass educators is so limited that their students, and maybe you might be a, a veteran of this, was limited to yeah. until when you got with me, possibly. And the only reason I might have expanded on the core, on, on the core tones or the other things, is that I'm a Banakis veteran, I'm a Madame Charloff veteran, Richie Byrack, Claire Fisher. The, you know, the people and then the transcriptions that I've done over the years, all the people that taught me weren't bass players. They got me to expand my mind. I have a new harm, a composition teacher now is a pianist, Alex Berksos. Um, so I respect the idea that bass teach. Am I talking too much here? No, you're good. You're good. OK, I, I respect. I had to watch it. <laughs> um, I respect the notion of bass teachers wanting to help people, but I got to say, bass players don't tend, seemingly don't seem to want to learn harmony or teach it. And in fact, some top teachers have never authored a single piece based in harmony in their careers. Do you think that's because technique is maybe getting in the way of academia? In this day, it is. You know, uh, there is a, a kind of a, a mutual... I don't really want to work hard to learn. I want to have fun. <laughs> and the message has been picked up loud and clear, in my opinion, by base educators who are very content to accommodate these people. <laughs> I'm not, which means that I'm not going to be as popular among people who want to play because I'm not a good whatever works for you is <laughs> OK kind of a vibe. <laughs> I just don't see the merit in it. And so you, you can talk to any any member of my alumni that I teach and every single one of them will go. Oh, yeah, there's not been a single lesson that they've been able to go into where they've told me what they want to learn. I just will not entertain it. It's like, no, this is my lesson. You're here to learn. I will tell you what to do. Yes. I mean, it's a problem whereby I think if if people have this the fun entertainment, it's all, it becomes almost Netflix. And as a result, the academia gets lost for entertainment. And I think yes. there's a difference there. There's a big difference there. Well, further, the academia gets watered down for entertainment. I mean, I've seen a couple of guys say, well, listen, you know, learning is, is, is hard and it doesn't have to be. Hmm. So it can be fun. And the moment I believe, I believe, when I see a teacher referring to fun, that is an, an indicator, it's a signal to me that the content has been watered down, which in a sense is kind of patronizing adult men and women, that they can't tolerate a simple 20 or 30 minutes of regard of perfect musical content because it isn't fun. And I personally object to this patronization, I really do. So the nature of including the word fun is, I, I don't know. It's, it's a shock to me because, if I may, learning how to play properly isn't meant to be fun. No. It isn't meant to be awful. It isn't meant to be exhilarating. It isn't meant to be debilitating. All that learning properly is meant to do is to be learn, learning properly and benefit from it. There mm. is no emotional context that ought to go with it. And I point to the teaching of learning how to drive a car. Let's make a left turn. But here, I'm going to teach you how to do it so it's fun for you. <laughs> We're going to do acceleration on the highway and then deceleration as we exit. But I'm going to make it fun for you. It's, mm. to me, i got to use the word, I think it's insulting. It's, it's, it is an indication that the proper teaching of music is a distasteful thing to both teacher and students. And I've objected to it for so long. And of course, people will write responses about my comments online, but it can be proven in a practice room, practice room. People can't, let me, refute, let me rephrase this. It isn't what we op opine about these things. It is what happens on this instrument that counts. And that's why I feel that a lot of guys are having fun and doing great and going to clinics and this and, and hanging out and going to webinars and everybody's having a great time. But people aren't improving as far as I've seen. Some have. Can't say for not everybody, but not.
but there is a real dearth of content. Excuse me while I uh, just finish this up with one thought. You're okay. I've got to add some stuff anyways. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Keep your idea. <laughs> there, there is a notion that this, uh, whatever works for you. Well, oh, no, no. The notion is everybody's different. So we all learn differently. No, we don't. You learn your way. I learn my way. In essence, this statement by its very presentation negates classroom teaching completely. It says that if you and I and 10 other guys go into a classroom learning from a teacher, I may not learn what I've heard. You might learn what they've heard, what you heard, what this guy learned. It's all subjective to the fact that you're different from me. So classroom teaching is flawed according to the notion that we're all different. Hmm. I don't believe it. I think that we're all the same except that you know more about this than I do, so you would begin here. I uh, learn faster than you do, so I might get a little more content. But in the common need, we are all identically the same. We all require the same music, and we all require the same music the same way, learned our ways, which makes us different, because you learn faster and you know more but I still and you still need to know those major minors. So the nature of everybody is different has invalidated classroom teaching. People are spending $30,000 a year or more to go to schools to essentially end up in a class where they may or may not learn because everybody's different. At least that's my vision of it. And I think that that's a terrible concept to put out there because people aren't different. They're all the same and need the same stuff except for moments of adjustment. Yeah. That's it. I said my monologue. Oh, no, you're right. And and what's 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 nice here is there's echoes and there's things, again, that uh, hopefully people, I can definitely try and communicate to people from my experiences from going through this with yourself. Okay. Now, um, when I speak to some of my students now, I, the metaphor I use is the Mini and the Porsche, whereby both cars can do 90 miles an hour, but if you're in the Mini, it's shaking, everything's falling apart. If you're in the Porsche, you're cruising and having a while of a time, you know, enjoying the views. Um, this is how I would compare to academic study. The, the, I, with, with all respect, Jeff, I love you, man, but I, I don't ever recall sitting in a practice room working through exercise going, this is great. I always remember it as being, this is hard work. I would go home exhausted. It was rugged determination to get things nailed it was sitting there working out the positions working out the relationship between notes and harmony and, and melody and everything it was hard work but once I've gone through it and I've continued it's not like I've stopped now and I've reached a plateau I'm still studying I'm still improving I still practice academia today I sight read every day but what I find now is the fun side of things it's a lot easier and I enjoy it a lot more. <laughs> Whereas before I would do the same gig. I was the mini and I was sweating and terrified. All of a sudden now I've gone through that process. I've come out the other side and I'm like, actually, I'm going to sit back and enjoy this because it's within my skill set now. And as a result, I actually enjoy the fun element a lot more. So it's uh, well, that's the reward. Um the, the idea of this, you know, one of the things I've, I've commented about in webcams and webcasts is that people aren't learning anything. Unfortunately, what I'm presenting is a sort of a critical overview of things to get people to get out of that mindset, which I think is necessary. If it wasn't, I'd just sit there and say, by the way, here's this line, go practice it. But there's, a, I'm dealing with, we're dealing with, and like minded teachers are dealing with an era where people ought to hear this message to at least start to wonder if there's something they ought to change. That's why my things base a little bit on what they refer to as criticism, mm -hmm. is criticism of an industry, an era, and a time. And the replacement, the learning, is to read, practice uh, uh, harmonic exercises, get with teachers, and use your ear and imitate because the methods are proven. I have a question for you. Come on in. It, are you a genius musician? No, I'm a beginner every day. <laughs> Let's take that as a point of regard. Okay. Here's a guy with a master's and had gone through everything. 
mm. who might say, because I'm not a genius either. Here's a guy who says he's not a genius, but he's a guy who slugged it out a little bit in the, cl in the classroom. And with that caveat, s classroom practice really isn't that awful. You're sitting in an air-conditioned room or a heated room, and it's nice and pleasant, and you're practicing music. So I don't see where the torture is. The, the, the idea that you are certainly not in your artful mindset is uncomfortable. So not you particularly, but all of us. It, we've all shared this experience. There's nothing unique in your experience or mine. And the reason I mentioned if you're, or asked if you're a genius is because here's a guy, a working class bloke from <laughs> England, <Yeah. laughs> from England, who hopped the jet, came to America a couple of times, got put, I assume, and I'll take a little credit, on a path. I didn't invent it. I just put you here. That's all. Gave a little push. You did the work, you did the stuff, and you ended up a world-class, well, world regard, fully touring musician. And this is the legacy of ignoring the messages and the tuitions and the advice and the classrooms that are available to everybody having a great old time. And you did it uh, the proper way. It is proper because violinists and oboists and clarinetists do it this way. And they all become superior players, or most of them. So you're an example of a guy who has a world-class rep, a full-time teacher, a, a steadily growing, developing website, um, an affiliation. Now we're, we're, we're partnering up in this type of genre. Um, you did it based on your ability to do the work. And that's all that it took, as well as being self-taught in the, you know, listening to rock or funk. You're a living... You're an icon for this precise reward for doing what it is that I've been preaching for 20, 30 years. And I don't know too many people like you. Well, thanks, Jeff. Um, you, you can't do push-ups and not develop muscles. I think you said that, no? Yeah, you can't do push-ups and then not. But people do this. They do two push-ups and run to the mirror to see. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, no. <laughs> I know. I need Listen, I... I will say thank you first first of all for the, the beautiful comments, but I will say one thing to anybody that's watching this now, and that is I don't think it's fluke in any way that when I look back at my career, everything that I am proud of, um, my books, my third book, working with uh, Van Morrison, Albert Lee, Leo say there's three Grammy Award winners, um, Steve Morse, my relationship with you now, all of that came after I studied very hard and very focused academically, whereby everything before that, I was taught contemporary, shall we say, contemporary school, stuff like that, and those things were missing. Now, I, I know I, you, you naturally get older, wiser. I hope I'm a better human now than I was when I was in my 20s. I strive to be, that's for sure, but... As do I. There is, there's not a chance in hell that's a fluke. I stopped my life. I worked my absolute butt off completely, shut the doors and done nothing but focused on academic content for, for well over two years. And then came back and said, hey, this is film man version 1.2. And then everything that I'm proud of in my career is post that event. That's not a fluke. That's no, it's not. Again. And I <laughs> applaud you because you are you should be a figurehead for everybody, not me. I did it years ago. I'm an old guy now. You should be a figurehead. And one of the things is I'm not looking at these broadcasts to do any kind of, you know, ass kissing or, or thumbs up or, you know, but as a point of, of importance to people watching this, because I wouldn't have uttered this if I didn't believe it. I would not have said it. But Phil is an example of what everybody can have. Now, Phil said he practiced his ass off. It's almost akin to suffering. So I'm going to add a caveat to this. You did, people that, that are watching this don't have to share Phil's experience. There's no need to suffer to learn. His <laughs> suffering, when he re refers to it, is yeah. because the man was driven. Yeah. Most bass players aren't driven. If you're driven like Phil... This, I was driven, and there is a kind of a slight suffering element to it. 
but all bass players that got into a little reading, little, I, let me rephrase that, who read every day, who read content, etudes, lessons, important things, can do so without suffering and still grow as musicians. You know, I could do the exercises that Arnold Schwarzenegger did in order to win the uh, Mr. Universe contest for him, but I know I won't win it, but I'll still look well improved and still be in great, way, great uh, better shape. So don't be Phil Man and suffer. <laughs> he, he, he chose to suffer, but he loves music so much. Well, hey, let's just, let's just frame that for everyone that's watching. There was suffering, but these two clowns then used to go and have barbecue ribs afterwards. So let's just remember, remember that as well. Okay, so. We used to go out and eat barbecue, yeah. Hey, listen, let's, let's flip back to this because this actually ties on nicely. Next question, okay. We're going to get a little bit more musical and some actual application. And you can Absolutely. See um, question, um, where's a good place for, to start for somebody who wants to undertake the learning of jazz on jazz to on bass. So first time, never gone near jazz, never listened to it. They come from a contemporary background. First of all, why should they study it? I guess is a question we should say, but but where should they start? Where's where's where is that journey? Where did you commence? Well, I'll make a nutshell answer to why they should study it. Jazz is uh, uh, the best, in my opinion, academic music to to practice because it includes and actually functions on harmony, uh, melody, and resolution. Resolution means if I play a bass line, it's the resolution. In contemporary music, Jack Bruce did. <laughs> it's resolution. Resolution is a part of jazz. In fact, it's a part of music. So they should learn jazz, I believe, because it is the greatest academic approach. You don't have to play jazz. No one has to play it. It's just a great academic music. I'm going to be blunt here again, <clears throat> which okay. I think is important. I don't well, think anybody should be teaching themselves how to play jazz. I think that people ought to go to a teacher. because The problem is, is let me teach myself how to do um, quark uh, studies. Uh, teaching myself the theory of relativity, teaching myself physics. It would be better if I had a teacher who in the skill set could make sequential the lessons. So the best I could suggest is also most people watching this don't need bass lessons. That's the ironic thing. People need oboe lessons because the oboe requires learning how to play. The violin does too. The bass is relatively simple. So in a sense, if people know how to pluck a string and know how to get around the instrument, for general purposes, a piano teacher or a guitar teacher or a sax teacher might suffice, or a bass teacher that teaches music based in the content of jazz. So the beginning, walking bass lines, simple walking bass lines. Scales and modes are overrated. They are no more and no less important than other aspects of jazz harmony. Reading jazz tunes, you could do it on two chords, C7 and F7, and do walking lines on C7 and F7. And by playing two chords, it's a tolerable approach. But the thing is, is that a lot of guys don't know how I did this. Mm. It's hard to explain here, but I'll give a 10-second synopsis. Where am I? C7. Where am I going? To F7. Where am I? F7. Where am I going? To C7. That's the core of jazz playing. And notice it was a sequence of two hands <laughs> playing notes on the neck that are harmonically perfect. It was a, a lessons that I teach are to encourage the learning of right notes because in the performance, I think there were popular lessons that say learning wrong notes. 
um, have been taught as a possible way to recover from a mistake. Ironically, practically, no one plays wrong notes to where they have to recover because most people play pop lines, pop songs, rock songs. It's rare that jazz players watching this won't know how to recover from a mistake. So I learn right notes and teach right notes. C7. Where am I going? To F. Where am I going? To C. And that is the trick of jazz walking. Solos, similar things. Where am I? C7. Let's go to the Phil Mann chord tone principles. Is this okay, Phil, that I do this? Yeah, okay. That's okay. It's, it's from, it's from, the book was written from you, so go for it. <laughs> it's okay. Phil Mandel. Oh, Phil Mandel. I have a friend, Phil Mandel. No, I, I like Mandel. go for that. So you know about Phil Mandel? <laughs> you know who Phil Mandel is? You know the name? Uh, I know Nate Mandel. I don't know Phil Mandel, no. Phil Mandel. I grew up with him. We were in our first bands together. Oh, wow. Really? Phil Mandel. So I called you Phil Mandel. Okay, here we go. Soloing, <laughs> chord tones C7 and F7. So that is a perfect rendition. It's a little vanilla, but academic music is vanilla. Yeah. So then do it in F7. B flat. E flat. A flat. And it's the playing of the notes that gets me to demystify this neck to where I could... You know, and do my thing. I don't even have to think about it. I can just play. That's the reward of jazz studies. Did I answer this question okay? Yeah, you nailed it, my friend. No worries. Um, someone asked if, if time's against them and they've only got one hour maximum, like literally, you know, they're, they're, they're a dad. Uh, they've got a full-time nine-to-five job. They've got to walk the dog, do the washing, and time's against them, right? Um, well, how should they go about learning standards? I mean, how, how should they organize their, pr their practice regime? If you want to learn a standard and you only have an hour, learn yeah. the first four bars. Done. Then go, then go do your day. Yeah. And then the next day, review the four bars and then yeah. do your thing. And then go back and do the four bars and add three, four more bars as well. It's a nice thing. I, I, I thought about that question actually myself and how I do that with my students. You say four bars because obviously we're just given a random, but to quote what we took, you spoke about just a second ago, I actually tell my students to work within a resolution. So if, they, if they're looking at, I don't know, uh, Duke Ellington Satin Doll, where it says two fives, two fives, so if you say, okay, let's isolate just that two five, okay. spend some time on, and then, and then work within a resolution. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, good, uh, it's a good process. Um, how about the actual way that you practice how if you if you if someone put a standard in front of you jazz that, that jeff that you didn't know you've never seen it i just pull it you know you, you turn up on the here it is the book of the book of doom okay <laughs> and you turn up and somebody throws it in front of you and says hey jeff we're going to play this song and you go i don't know this song post gig you got home you thought i'm gonna get the book open and have a look at it and see what's going on how would you go about dissecting and analyzing that chart? Well, I'll begin by saying if anybody's on a gig playing jazz tunes or real book tunes, they ought to know the answer to that question. <laughs> and the reason I bring that up is because a lot of guys do what, the, what I call the what ifs. Okay. What if, and, and I'll use yours as an example. What if I'm on a gig and a guy pulls up, a, goes to the real book and opens it soon and says, play it. If I'm on a gig with real book charts or songs being played, I'll know exactly how to solve that. Yeah. For the most part, bass players that aren't known to play jazz will not be hired for jazz gigs. And for the most part, bass players that are not known how to read will not be hired and be expected to read a chart being thrown in front of them. These are essentially made up scenarios. Mm. Has it happened? Sure. Has it happened to many people? No, it doesn't. I'm not going to go to Phil's house and 
BS. I can't even think of an example. To cook an English meal, I'm a cook, and cook it on the fly if I haven't the experience at it. Whatever okay. an English meal is, I don't know. I'm, I'm terrified by the thought of your cooking, Jeff. I can tell you now. <laughs> I, I'm uh, actually might surprise you. I'm, I'm not okay, so bad. I'll hold you to that, my friend. Okay. I'll hold you to that. I've, I've, I've learned. I've learned by being self-taught in cooking. And oh, have, is that yes, I have. Made <laughs> a lot of mistakes and learned from them. Maybe we should have an academic path for cooking for you. <laughs> knife, knife permutations. I don't know. So that's good. Um, Jeff, we're getting to the end of the hour. And I'm actually going to, for the first time, I'm going to ask you a question from me. So everything that's come up thus far has come from other people. But I think I'm going to close this first installment of our little chats with a question from me. Yes, Mr. Man. Well, Mr. Berlin, uh, let's let's shoot. Everything we've done today has been targeting the learner, the student. And the teacher. Specifically, though, what advice would you like to give to teachers? Oh, well, I'll give, an, I'll give you an answer. For several years, <laughs> give me a second here. <laughs> give me a second. Yeah, I got you, Jeff. I got you. <laughs> For several, yeah, I have to word this carefully. For several years, I've been invited by a, a certain group of teachers to stop my critical ways to join and join with them to contribute my thing and be okay with their teaching their thing. I never accepted the invitation because it was morally, and I got to use that word, awful for me to be amongst a group where I felt that musical harm was taking place or a certain really poor level of education was taking place to where I would be earning my money and a lot of it I was I might add and turn a blind eye to what was happening around me so if I had advice instead of people inviting me to join them I have an invitation to base teachers because I respect their intentions and I always have. I just didn't respect the methods. I invite them to join me or us or people like us to join us in the abandonment of teaching styles and teaching contemporary principles and entirely focus on the teaching of music which gets everybody to learn how to play harmony and music equally. Here's an interesting thought to go with this. Since the 1920s, 20s was small band, kind of Louis Armstrong groups, Bix Beidebeck. 30s, they got into slightly bigger groups. 40s, big bands. 50s, R&B, rock and roll. 60s, uh, Beatles and acid rock and psychedelic rock. 70s, disco. 80s, hair bands. I don't know what the titles are at that 90 uh, 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 contemporary, whatever the styles were, 2000s rap, you know, like like the cars and are we not men? We are Devo, you know, that that type of genre, the 2000s, uh, the rap, the hip hop and going up into today in every single era without fail, the same notes have been used in that that are in music today. The same major chords, the same minor chords, the same pitches. I invite all teachers to abandon teaching based students to be contemporary and prepare them to be musical, entirely focused on the instrument and the musical content that will lift them and to not prepare people for a career, to not prepare people to become uh, in the industry because without that one basic skill, most people will never get there. And I'm saying it up front um, with all of the preparation elements that, that have been going on. A lot of people aren't working outside of clubs and even them, they've been compromised in, in since COVID-19. 
So ironically, that's the invitation I have for teachers. Instead of me joining you, join me. Join me, join us, Phil Mann and myself, join us, David Allen Moore, uh, uh, join us, uh, 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 I'm, I'm trying to think, my mind's going blank, Joe Hubbard, join there us. List. Huh? There was a list. There was a Go list. On. Go on, you keep talking. <laughs> well, we, you know, it's okay. We, it, it, okay. You know, even the list is still being amended because some of these guys still use tab. We'll find it. So that's the nature of this, to, to join us in the teaching of music only and stop trying to prepare people for careers that many will never get and many have not gotten, in my opinion. By the way, if everything I said in this video is wrong, ignore it. I'm only s suggesting and with Phil ideas and thoughts. If people don't like it, of course you should ignore it. But I'm saying what I'm saying for the, for the, for the good of the industry and being f clear on that. So that's what I would say to bass teachers. Get rid of styles, get rid of slap, get rid of funk, get rid of all this and get into the teaching of content. And that's what's gonna make your bass players all better players to have a shot at what Phil Mann just uh, is proudly wearing every single day, <laughs> just by the dint of learning music. I like that's that. good metaphor is that, you know what? It's like bad TV. If you don't like it, you can change the channel. And that's change all the channel. Good. Guys, I'm Phil Mann from With Bass In Mind. This is Jeff Berlin from the Jeff Berlin Music Group. We've had a wonderful, wonderful hour of great academic fueled conversation. Jeff, thank you so much for your time. I hope you've had a good hang. Let's see if we can make a difference one bass player at a time. One bass player at a time, Phil Mann. And let's try, I'm going to call you when we hang up. We'll have a chat yeah. and um, just to <laughs> catch up. And thank you to you. Thanks to everybody watching. And uh, I send much love and respect and uh, change hurts, but it's inevitable and, hurt and, and helpful, and hopefully that impacts with people. Till next time, Jeff. Cheers, mate.